Hello, hello and buongiorno amici! I'm Peter and here I'm telling you stories about the most interesting European cars of the 80s and 90s. And when we speak about cool cars of the 80s and 90s, there is an obvious elephant in the room, the holy grail of all car enthusiasts, the famous and glorious Ferrari F40. The car was produced from 1987 to 1992 with 1,315 cars made, but its story started several years earlier. At the beginning of the 80s, Ferrari actually already didn't produce real sports cars. Gradually, they shifted to production of ultra-powerful, super-fast, but comfortable luxury GT road cars like Testarossa, 400, T08, and Mondial. These cars were very fast, very beautiful, very good handling, and very expensive. But, frankly speaking, they had nothing to do with the pure racing origin of Ferrari. It's understandable. Enzo Ferrari was way over 80 at the time, and he preferred more comfortable, more luxury, and more easy driving cars now. And Ferrari also dropped from almost all large competitions too. But some of Ferrari engineers, like famous Nicola Materazzi, wanted to return the Ferrari's fame in racing, and Enzo Ferrari, in his heart, also was a fan of this idea. The problem was that there wasn't a good racing series to demonstrate the real abilities of Ferrari. They didn't want to participate in Le Mans, considering some past experience. And the Mille Miglia was almost forgotten in the sense of time. But here the world saw a brilliant rise of the Group B of the World Rally Championship. The famous and infamous Group B with almost no limitations, the racing series we already discussed in previous videos and will address to again and again in the future. In 1984 Nicola Materazzi comes to Enzo Ferrari with the idea of building a Group B car on the basis of Ferrari 288 GTO. Don Enzo, who also wanted to say his last word in racing, fully approves. But then they need to convince the general manager of Ferrari, Eugenio Alzazzi. Finally, he agrees, but on the condition that the development should not divert resources from the development of other models. So, a small team of Ferrari engineers, in two years, working on Saturdays only, built five coolest 280 GTO Evoluzione racing cars with impressive 650 horsepower and a top speed of 368 km per hour or 225 miles per hour, thanks to the twin turbocharged V8 engine. But at this moment FIA banned Group B after a series of tragic incidents, and Ferrari, once again, had no race to participate in. Well, it was a huge disappointment. But Nicola Materazzi came up with a new idea, Use these prototypes to create a road legal car with a real Ferrari sports soul for real Ferrari enthusiasts to celebrate the upcoming 40 years anniversary of Ferrari. And this idea was completely approved by everyone – Enzo Ferrari, Eugenia Alzati and the marketing department of Ferrari, who thought, quote, customers had been saying our cars were becoming too plush and comfortable, unquote. And, quote, we wanted it to be very fast, sporting in the extreme, and spartan, unquote. And so they did. The development of Ferrari F40 started in June of 1986. And just 13 months later, on 21st of July of 1987, the car was officially revealed in Maranello. The body, one of the most distinctive ones in history, was designed by Pietro Camardella of Studio Pininfarina, who also designed Testarossa and later Ferrari F50. The body of F40 was fully made of carbon fiber and pressed Kevlar panels on an aluminum frame for decreasing the weight. The paint was so thin that you could see the carbon fibers through it, one of distinctive features of the F40. The windows were made from a polycarbonate plastic instead of glass. The first 50 cars didn't have normal wind down side windows, only sliding Lexan racing windows, all for the sake of weight reduction. The interior was very basic and spartan. No glove box, no carpets, no radio. Even no door handles and no interior door panels on the first 50 cars. To open the door, you should just pull a cord hanging somewhere inside the door, also everything to reduce the weight. 
But surprisingly, the car had the air conditioning. A very basic one, but it was there. All cars were painted in red Rosa Corsa color and had red seats with dark gray carpeted, yes, carpeted dashboard and left hand drive. It is known that at least 7 to 9 cars were later modified by Benin Farina for the Sultan of Brunei, converting them to the right hand drive and changing exterior and interior colors. There may be several other modified cars, but this is not confirmed. The price of the car was high. $400,000, meaning almost a million of dollars in today's money. But the car won a great demand from Ferrari customers. Initially, Ferrari planned to make 400 cars, but at the end they made 1,315. 213 of them were exported to the United States and they all were sold on pre-orders. The car had 2.9 liter twin turbocharged and intercooled V8 engine that was a heavily modified engine from Ferrari 288 GTO Evoluzione. The development of the engine, gearbox and the chassis was supervised by Nicola Materazzi, who this time had the permission to involve any resources of Ferrari engineering team that he considered necessary. As the result, the engine had a claimed peak power of 471 horsepower and 577 newton meters or 426 foot pounds of torque. The claimed top speed was 324 km per hour or 201 miles per hour, with 0 to 100 km per hour or roughly 0 to 60 miles in 4.1 seconds. I say claimed because these figures were never confirmed by independent testers. The American magazine Car and Driver tested a 40 with the results of the top speed of 317 km per hour or 197 miles per hour and 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. The test pilots of German magazine reached 321 km per hour or 199 miles per hour and made 0 to 62 miles per hour in 4.6 seconds. It is very, very fast in any case. The only issue was with just a psychological mark 200 miles per hour and arguments around the fact if Ferrari F40 can cross it or not. So Ferrari claimed to be the first production car with a top speed over 200 miles per hour, faster than the main direct competitor Porsche 959. And the independent tests showed that probably it wasn't. But in any case it was a bloody fast car. The handling and quality of the car received mixed reviews. While almost all car journalists approved the speed and dynamics of the car, many of them pointed to the lack of comfort, driving assist and frankly a lack of the assembling quality for such an expensive car. Someone even called it a go-kart with a plastic box around it. In comparisons between Ferrari F40 and Porsche 959, most of the journalists chose Porsche 959. I think there was a great misunderstanding of this car at that moment. The reviewers expected a new Ferrari to be as luxurious and comfortable as the same Testarossa, which was a great car by the way and we will speak about it someday. But a 40 simply wasn't a luxury GT car for a long distance driving. It was a racing car. Yes, it was a go-kart with a plastic box around it. And this was the main idea of it. It was a 500 horsepower go-kart which could get from 0 to 60 miles per hour faster than I pronounced this sentence. Oh yes, it was the funniest go-kart on the planet and you could get so much driving fun and experience that you could never get in any other car. And you had a plastic box around you, just to protect you from the wind and rain, nothing more. At the end of the day Enzo Ferrari once said that when you buy a Ferrari, you pay for the engine and everything else you get for free as an addition. And the F40 was a summit of this philosophy. This was one of the last road legal supercars without even minimal driving assist systems. It was just you, the engine and the chassis. Nothing more. Nothing to intervene into this relationship and nothing to protect you from consequences of your bad decisions. A car that is impossible now and one of the greatest cars ever made. At the same time, almost everyone, both reviewers and customers, underlined how great the car handles. Despite the lack of comfort and absent driving assists, the road driving of the F40 is easy, predictable and not intimidating. 
But if you want to play and bring it to a racing track, the car will happily provide you with all power and all joy you need in the world, and probably will not kill you if you act with a common sense. And in spite of all those magazine reviews, the customers and car collectors clearly made their choice. This car was one of the most desirable ones even during the time of production, and it is one of the best known and most desirable icons in the industry now. There were two aftermarket performance versions of the F40. Yes, even this performance-oriented car had its own performance versions. First, there were 19 cars built for GT racing series, such as IMSA GT Championship. They were called a 40 LM, with LM standing for Le Mans. Although these cars never actually participated in 24 hours of Le Mans, they raced on many other tracks from 1989 to 1995. The results were not brilliant, but very competitive. Another special series – Ferrari F40 Competizione. Ten cars were built in this series. The engine's power was increased to 691 horny ponies, and the reported top speed was 367 km per hour or 228 miles per hour. So, would you like to buy a Ferrari F40? If yes, you should better prepare a large pile of money, for these cars are not cheap at all. Well, they never were cheap and probably never will. In general, you are looking at an amount around 2 million dollars now. It's also not that easy to really buy one, even if 2 million is just a pocket money for you. There were a lot of F40s imported to the United States in addition to the original 213. These cars are older than 25 years now, so you can legally import Europe specs car into the United States. And I would go with the European car, because there are still more of them in Europe. And European F40s look better, in my opinion without that stupid additional bumpers added to comply with the US regulations. So, if you are buying the Ferrari F40, basically you can take one of two ways. First, you can buy the F40 at some of large and well-known auctions. It is probably the safest way, but the most expensive one, considering auctions fees and all this stuff. And if you want to try to save several hundred thousands, you'd like to buy the car from a private person, a car collector, or some kind of a dealership. But this world of second-hand sales of rare Ferraris is unfortunately somewhat tricky and shady sometimes. There are a lot of frauds and fakes, unfortunately. Fake sellers, fake buyers, fake cars, stolen cars, long chains of middlemen, etc. I don't want to say that all of these guys are frauds, but when it comes to a $2 million car, yes, there are a lot of people who want to get this money in the unlawful way. So, just be careful and work with reputable and legit sellers, engines and dealers. Frankly speaking guys, I don't think that many of the viewers of this video are going to buy the F40 tomorrow. But if you are, you may be interested to know that we probably can help you with it. We have a network of partners in Europe, who can find cars that are not listed on the internet, check the reputation of the seller, inspect the car properly in person, check the history of the car, and organize everything else. We can help you to find the car, negotiate the price, ship the car to the United States, and help you to import it properly and to deal with all legal paperwork. This is not only for the F40, of course. We can find virtually any 80s, 90s or 70s car in Europe for you and bring it to the United States. And if you are watching this video from any other country, we can find a cool American car for you in the US and ship it to your country. The link to our website with all details is in the description below. Well, thank you very much for watching. So, what do you think about the great Ferrari F40? Or maybe you were happy to drive one? I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments below. By the way, if you happen to own the F40 and you are somewhere from Maine to North Carolina, could I shoot a video with your car? I promise to bring a six-pack and pizza for you. Well guys, if you like this video, please give me thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Grazie mille amici, and see you next time.